The following podcast contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. The Showdown Podcast with Corey and Vic. The debate on what movie is better, Corey's choice versus Vic's choice. They each plead their case and try to destroy the others. It's a combat of subjective opinion. I'm Brad Scott, your impartial judge, and as always, my say is final. Welcome to the Showdown Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Scott. Welcome to episode 26, Monster Mayhem. Today, in the orange corner, the challenger, Corey, certifiably insane, Miller with his movie, Hatchet, and in the Burnt Sienna corner, the reigning champion, Victor, the vacuum salesman, Miller, with his movie, Monster Squad. I'm your host, Brad Scott. Let's get to the showdown. I've given up asking. I'm not, I'm not even asking anymore. I've just, I'm giving up right now. All right. I'm just going to, I'm going to let it go. All right. <laughs> Welcome, uh, welcome to the showdown, gang. Uh, Hello we, again. We've got so Vic is back again. He's still here. He's going to defend that title. Uh, Corey, two weeks in a row, I'm still standing, people. Well, technically he's There's, sitting, yeah. and yeah. he couldn't even drive, so it's all good. He's I got not doing as well as you think. I have people for that. He sits in the back seat, saying, "Miss Daisy, drop me off uh, over here." Miss Alyssa, I need to go over here. Yes, Mister Victor. <laughs> Okay, we're we're gonna start out, uh, I guess, uh, with me. I've been I've been uh, the challenger. Uh, I, yes, been I've been forced getting, to go first. I've been forced to go first. Uh, my film is Hatchet. Ah, uh, it's a truly inspiring story of a young boy whose plane crashes in the wilderness, and he's left on his own to survive, having only the trusty hatchet his father gave him before the plane. And you remember from reading this in fifth grade. Tell us about it, Corey. Okay. As much as Brad wants to believe that that's the real storyline, mine is, this is actually about... Uh, completely different movie, isn't it? It's a completely different movie. Okay. <laughs> it's about a, uh, a group of tourists who take a boat ride once they find out from uh, the Reverend Zombie, played by Tony Todd, about the character of... Not character, but the... Uh, the legend, the local legend of Victor Crowley. Was it, it a three-hour tour? It was. It could have been. Now that I think about it, it they could have. I bet the weather the started getting rough and the tiny ship, ship was, was lost. lost. Yeah. If not for the courage of the, the fearless, fearless crew, crew, then then it would be lost. Yeah. Uh, Victor Crowley is a a disfigured <laughs> man <laughs> that uh, who was tragically and accidentally <laughs> killed <laughs> with a hatchet <laughs> by his <laughs> by his father. So anyway, you can't not make it through the song. The people that are listening, come on, we're singing the song, and that's why I stopped. Okay, so okay. continue. So, so anyway, he's Thank killed by his father, uh, but then uh, Professor Zombie was. Yes. No. 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 Victor Crowley. Okay. No. V- Prof- Reverend Zombie. Reverend Zombie. Sorry. Yes. He uh, Look at that room. he is not uh, dumb enough to go out there because he knows of the he knows of this whole. Why does he call it. Reverend Zombie? Is he a zombie? Like no, he uh, is actually a big fake. A what? A, a fake. He plays. That was he plays, F-A-K-E. Yeah, <laughs> not F A G. Yeah, um, he. Uh, he it, it's a character he plays plays for the tourists who you know to try and make them believe about all this voodoo stuff that's down there and all, and all this hogwash. So, um, so he's like, no, nah, I ain't going. I ain't stupid. Um, so he tells them where it's, where it's at, and they end up taking this boat ride and and find out, uh, um, find the the location of where his Victor Crowley's cabin was. Um, and Victor Crowley does not like them being there because um, he is a crazy big ass monster, played by Kane Hodder, who some of you may know as playing uh, Jason. Yeah, take his boat. Yes, uh, no, he's not the Undertaker brother. 
That's in a different game. He he was in uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Like the original? Uh, no, he the was reboot? like the. I think he was like the. I want to say the third Jason. The one in uh, New York, Manhattan. Yeah, <clears throat> I think he was. I think he was in that one. And uh, but this has got some. This got some people you may you may recognize. Um, actually, let me see here. Uh, here comes folks. The name drop. Yeah. Um. Uh, he was in. He was in Jason Goes to Hell. He was in the final Friday. And uh, yeah, he wasn't Jason Takeout. By the Jason. way, I just want to let you know. Uh, I just sat here and Googled um, Hatchet because yeah. I was gonna kind of look up some pictures and yeah. some facts and stuff. And uh, what's the what's the first thing that popped up? What is what's Google's first impression of Hatchet? Novel by Gary <laughs> by Gary Paulson. <laughs> nice. The novel by Gary Paulson. So, for those of you that were that were agreeing that Brad wasn't crazy for thinking that, we are vic- vindicated. So anyways, all right, Hatchet, ooh, that's a cool post, that's a cool looking demon they got there. 2006 version, right? Uh, yes, 2006. There was two sequels. This dude looks like, we're talking about the first this one. dude looks like, uh, like an insane version of the Goonies. Sloth. Yeah, Chunk. Sloth, yeah. Sloth. Um. <laughs> Chunk. I told you, that kid's disgusting. <laughs> I thought that's what you were talking about. <laughs> this movie does star Jill David Moore, who some of you may know from Grandma's Boy. He was also in uh, Avatar. What was he in Gra- Grandma's Boy? In Gra- he was he played the uh, the robot dude. The dude. He, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The idiot. yeah. He's in uh, Bones and a couple other things. Yeah, too. he was in Bones too. Uh, he's on uh, that new show with uh, Mr. Fantastic now. I forget the name of the show. Ooh, Ian Gruffold or whatever his name is. Anyhow, uh, Dion Richmond is also in it, who you may know as Kenny from The Cosby Show. And uh, also Mercedes the McNabb, editor, who was on Bucky. Token black guy? Yes, he was your token black guy. Um, Wait, who was that? Who played? Who was Kenny? Kenny? He was a little kid that was No, 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 no. What was his name? No. Uh, his name in the movie? I know who Kenny on the cast. It was Marcus. He played Marcus. Dion Richmond. This is his real name. Robert England has got a small part in this. Uh, we talked about in last in um, last episode actually. We talked about Blair Witch. Joshua Leonard, who was in Blair Witch, is also in this movie. Uh, I also said uh, I also mentioned that Tony Todd was was in this. Uh, Adam Green, the the writer and director, <laughs> Kenny was has a cameo. He was Bud. Yeah, yeah, Bud. Yeah, yeah. that's where I was getting yeah. to. But you stopped me because you said you knew who he was. I mean, I knew. I, I, I was pretty sure, but I wanted to con- I wanted to be really sure before I said it. But anyhow, um, this this is uh, all, this, the whole storyline for uh, for Victor Crawley was created by Adam Green, and uh, I, th- I think I think if I recall correctly, he said it was as uh, you know like this this monster idea he's had since he was since he was either a teenager or a kid or whatever. You know what it probably was he came up with it. Mm-hmm. Right after he saw a little movie about Crystal Lake, which has pretty much the same exact freaking storyline. Big monster, deformed guy, runs around killing people in the woods after his mom, fucked his parents fucked him up. It's the same freaking story. Tell me it's not. It's not the same story. It is the same story. No, it's not. They, go, they, they show up at a place. There's, this, there's a legend of a monster that lives in the woods that kills people when they get too close. Sound familiar? Really familiar. They get too close, and what's he do? He comes out and kills everybody that gets anywhere near him. Then you find out that oh, it's his sister. It's 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 the same story. He he watched every any of the any of the old watch Friday the Thirteenth, watched the Halloween, and that formulated into Hatchet. You think so? Yeah, it's the same stories. Watching it, that's the whole. That's what I saw, like bits and pieces. And now, creatively. That's where you get your ideas from. Like, when you watch movies as a kid, you get ideas for doing things, and he created a movie out of it, so I'm not holding that against him, but it's the same story. Yeah, but see, the thing is, though, I mean, I, I've done it myself. I'll watch a movie, and I'll start getting ideas from that, but they aren't actually related to that film. It's like, oh, I could do something like that. Something like this. It's just, but there's just nothing original nugget. in this movie. Everything that's played out in this movie is in is in those two movies. Every bit of it. I, I I have to, I, I I disagree. I, st- I I stand by I stand by this obviously. Um, <laughs> well, you have to. It's your movie. Yeah, I know. Um, well, even still, um, Adam has uh, he he's got for me 
He's one of my he's one of my favorite directors. J- just because not not just because um, of the things he does away from the screen, but the things that he does on screen, it's it's somebody I look up to as a as a filmmaker um, because it, it's hard to it's it's really hard to explain. I mean he. He's he's able. I love how he's able to get the backing backing for his films and able to. He gets this idea for, you know, like for this and puts everything into it and and creates this franchise and this and basically a cult following. It's like that's what I want. I want to be able to to create the, to create something. How like did this. you not mention Robert Fucking England? I did. You guys talked did. over me. Is that when we were singing Gilligan's Island? No, no it wasn't. It was later. You all were talking over me. I wasn't talking. No, we weren't. Well, I heard you. And Candyman? No. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that one you were talking over. <laughs> See? That's the, the zombie guy. Man, yeah. yeah Preacher zombie. Yeah, that's that's the Reverend zombie. Preacher Walker. So anyhow, what he's been able to, what he's accomplished uh, in just you know nine years. This is his first film. He's already made, uh, I believe, four feature films plus a TV show. Uh, he's got a successful podcast. As What's well. his TV show? It's called Holliston. It's uh, you can find it on Hulu Plus. Mm. It's a uh, it's it's about two roommates who are filmmakers. Him and Joe Lynch, who did Everly, which we talked about a couple episodes ago. And uh, they're roommates, and they're aspiring horror filmmakers. The two of them work at a uh, at a at a local TV station, and while they're trying to do to make their films, that's how they they, they make their money is by working at the TV station. Um, and there's lots of horror cameo horror uh, stars that cameo on the show as well too. Which Kane Hodder has has been on there at least once. Anyhow, but that's not the point. The point is, Hatchet is a, is a great new, well, not any, it's not new anymore, but it's, it's a great little franchise as, as far as a new monster. And spawned two sequels. It, spawned, it did spawn two sequels. Uh, the second one he, he wrote and directed, the, the, the third one, he didn't write and he only produced that one, let somebody else take the reins uh, because he was working on another project. And, uh, again, you know, this is... We can talk about how Monster Squad has got Dracula and Frankenstein, the Mummy, and they're the the, the classic monsters. But uh, Victor Crowley is a, a a new monster for a new generation. Ooh, that was a dismount right there. <laughs> a dismount. <laughs> <laughs> One of my gymnastics. It's interesting. You done already? Yeah, go ahead. That's interesting because you didn't even tell us about the story. It's so bad. I did. No, you didn't. That was at the very beginning. You obviously weren't paying attention. Because it was so bad. Yeah, whatever. It was horrible. I no. missed the whole thing. Just like we missed who was in it because it was so bad. Because you were talking over me. <laughs> so the Monster Squad is a classic movie. <coughs> made back uh, when we were when we were younger, obviously. They were making movies that were put mm. out for families that were designed to entertain um, younger the younger demographic and still give them introduce them to some of the classic monster movies that we grew up watching as kids. Um, this movie I actually enjoyed a lot because I actually introduced my son um, to monster movies through this through this through this movie. Which that's why I have a connection to this movie. Like when we said, "Well, we're going to do monster movies," this, this is what I saw as a monster movie, and. and I mean, there's all kinds of monster movies, obviously, um, and like you said, it is. This is a classic take on the monsters. This is this is the universal monsters. These are the monsters that started it all. Like you said, you have the Gill Man, which is the the creature from the Black Lagoon, Frankenstein, um, <coughs> Dracula. Um, those those are the characters that are brought in. The Wolf Man. The Wolf Man. The story is basically about a bunch of kids who have an addiction to movie monsters. They love everything to do with the occult. With monsters, with anything, anything that's scary, um, and they have a little club that's up in the backyard of the of, uh, of the kid's house, and they get together and they talk about monster movies and they do geeky things, and that's the other thing that sorry that uh, you know that attracted me to this is that it's kind of like things that as a kid I actually was interested in um, and had a good time doing, which was reading comic books and reading about monsters and things of that nature. Um, some of the characters in it. 
um, which I thought was kind of funny, which people find interesting. Um, Bud Bundy, uh, character that plays, played by, that plays Bud Bundy, he's in it. Um, what's his name? I can't remember his name right now. David Faustino? David Faustino. Um, he's in it. He plays one of the characters in there, which no, is kind of funny. It. Yes, he does. No, he Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Michael like, Faustino. Sorry, not my friend. Say? Michael Faustino. Not Bud Bundy? Not Bud Bundy. <laughs> nope, but you could have redeemed yourself by saying Jason Hervey, who was in uh, uh, the movie with Fred Sa- or the TV show with Fred Savage. Yeah, that would be... His uh, brother. But anyway. I wonder years. And I didn't get a chance to say anything, so we'll go from there. Anyway, um... So the story is basically about um, the kids figure out that they are, our monsters have moved into their town. Um, they start getting the different different signs that there could be monsters in their town. After everyone disbelieves them, they start seeing these telltale signs that there are monsters. You know, animals are disappearing, things are happening. Um, so they start investigating. Um, the wolf man shows up, um, and they figure uh, he shows up at the at the the prison uh, at the, the the police station and says. You have to lock me up. I'm the wolf man. There's going to be a full moon. He freaks out. They don't believe him. That's Uncle Rico, by the way. Yes. From, from again, Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite. Um, that movie. Or he, <laughs> um, he freaks out, turns into the wolf man, starts going after the cops. Now they, they really know that there is now something going on. Um, the kids figure out that um, the monsters are moving into their town. They're trying to figure out why. There's an old man that lives in the town that's the scary German guy. It's all they know about. Um, and he is their only answer as to how um, and why the monsters are there. I, I, I think it's funny, uh, especially, I think in a lot of 80s movies, there was always the creepy guy. Yeah, there's but always that one guy that like hides in there, that looks out the window and they see him and they get scared of him. Yeah. Then he ends up being the hero by the end of the movie. Yeah. Um, it's it's a tell it's a it's a true storyline you know it's it's the way that they made them back then and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, no, it's just it's it's fun it's just funny seeing yeah. it though. So basically, um, the overall plot of the movie is there is an amulet and once every hundred years the Earth comes in line with limbo and the monsters can destroy all of humanity and cause havoc and take over the world if they can get control of this amulet. Well, the last hundred years, um, Van Helsing managed to get a hold of the amulet and tried to send the monsters into limbo, which is the other end of the, of the, of the um, prophecy. Is if a virgin reads the prophecy, he can send the monsters into limbo. It's well, always got to be a virgin. It does. They're, you know, they are hot commodities. They're never like a whore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need the trampiest her- chick in town. A whore with herpes of the mouth. Let's <laughs> kiss the evidence. <laughs> and every hero. Um, so when they screw it up, the uh, Van Helsing gets sucked into the amulet. It gets sucked into limbo. The monsters get dispersed all over creation. And uh, the amulet gets taken away by Van Helsing's helpers who hide it in the new world. And uh, I'm just curious how... Dracula was able to get out of limbo. He never went to limbo. They got they got they got dispersed. They like ran all they got like shot around the world. They basically got sent all over the place. So he's just been hiding out for a hundred years? Yeah, because they can't do anything. He can't do anything until they, his whole purpose is to try to annihilate human humanity. So and the way to just, do it So he was just hanging out, you know, biting people and well, nobody knows. Doing his it. vampire thing. I mean, he's got nobody followers. Nobody noticing. Nobody noticing. He's got it. followers. Yeah. And he was collecting all the monsters. If you remember, he had collected yeah. Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. And he had found, he went and found the, uh, the, the creature of the Black Lagoon. He got a driver's license. Exactly. In 100 years. Yeah. Because he, he's you driving a car around later. You got to keep up with the times. <laughs> I mean, that's a thing. Anyway, <laughs> um, so the kids go and uh, they figure out that Van Helsing's helpers had hid the, the amulet in the New World, had taken it to this house that's in their town up in the woods. They go, they go and find it and stupidly pull the amulet out of the house, which had runes and all kinds of things in it to protect the amulet, and uh, Dracula could not get to the amulet in the house. But when they took it, which was his plan in the first place, was to get someone to go get it for him, he freed the amulet, so he was after them to get it. The old man tells them how to get rid of the how to get rid of it and what the prophecy means by explaining to them what the, everything written in German is, and they find out that there's a vir- they need a virgin to read the the, the prophecy in whole, on hollow ground, and then the animal will open up and suck all the bad guys into the into the limbo and they they would save the world. Well, the problem is the girl that they hired that they got to uh, to read it was not a virgin. 
So, there's your problem. So they ended up getting the little five-year-old girl that hangs out with them, which they should have figured out which was they the version. Should, which they should have just done to begin with. But she's five. How, you, how many five-year-olds do you what? know German? Is that, how the, is that how the other girl's father found out? <laughs> <laughs> no, take my daughter, please, to save humanity. Wait, Wait what do you please, mean it's not working? <laughs> is there something you want to tell me? <laughs> no, Daddy, no. <laughs> so, um, Jason loves me. <laughs> you don't know, Daddy. Um, I thought it was funny that... Uh, he, Dracula, was on the plane. When he left the plane, it was daytime. And nothing. he didn't die. Remember how he left the plane? Yeah, he flew out. At the bottom. At the bottom of the plane. But it's still daytime. It wasn't daytime. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. Yeah, rewatch it. It was dusk, actually. <laughs> the sun was still out. It was dusk. Sun's still out. Well, maybe like if it's... If the and sun he was in his bat form. Maybe it was as cloudy. You know? Have you seen uh, Dracula Untold? Um, which one's that one? The new one. Um, yeah, I did see that one. Where he's able to control the yeah, weather. I, I didn't say it, I liked he makes it. it cloudy. I didn't say I liked it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so... Yeah, if you look at my letterbox, like, D. Yeah. Here's the weirdest thing about this movie, right? Like, I remember it, but I don't remember it. Wolfman's yeah. got I know I've seen it... That's like the, the main thing. Everybody, like I know I've seen everybody it. knows. Yeah, everybody that. remembers that. What line. is it? Wolfman's Wolf got, got Nards. nards. It yeah, it kicks Wolfman. Yeah, like I remember it, but I don't remember it. It's like I know I've seen it when I was a kid because I can remember vividly. And I was really into monsters when I was a kid. Yeah. I used to read those books like when I was in elementary school at the school library. You had like Goonies and you had Monster Squad and like Stand by Me. Like they were and all Goonies kind of was kind of. I, I think Monster Squad was kind of a take on Goonies. Yeah. Well, you got a group of kids looking for something just like really? that. You're yeah, gonna, and then you really? Just, and then you just, Hold on. Get your nose out of my ass. Stop trying to take my thunder. Nice try. What? Yeah. Oh, you, you're trying to say... Oh, I see, what, I see what you're saying. No, I've always thought that. <laughs> I've always thought that. I Here, I'm going to... I'll be straight Wait, out. Is that written down on your paper that you have... No. That you have all... Hold on, hold on. Hey, you, you're you're always on? set up. Hold on. Hey, I'm the, I'm the official here. I'm the official here. Would you, you get in your corner... Stay there. I want to hear this explanation. Go no, ahead. I, I actually I love Monster Squad, but you know when it comes when it comes to having to battle it, I'm gonna to have to find something, and uh, and and yeah. But you know, as far as that comment goes, as far as Goonies, I've always thought that. I mean, I'm not gonna. It's, I'm not saying it just just to say it for the episode. I've always thought it was kind of a um, kind of an offshoot of, of Goonies because you got a group of friends. Who are all into the same thing? They're all looking instead of still looking for One Eye Willie, which is a hilarious name for a pirate. Um, instead of looking for his treasure, they're looking for this amulet. It's kind of it's kind of paralleling each other. Although there are different things that that happen, obviously different things. But yeah, it's, so kind of like it took you so fucking long to get to the damn like yeah. I was like, yeah, I want to hear the explanation instead of the comparison, and you went off on this whole tangent of. Hey, you wanted to hear it. That's what I had to say. That was a good explanation, though. It's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. Well, just kind of, kind of like his, kind of like his uh, hatchet is, uh, is like Friday the Thirteenth and all those other movies. Well, but he does have a point because, like, it's really his sister. It's the exact same as it's his mom. I, well, it, with hatchet though, that was it was him. There was there was no oh it's not really him. Oh wait wait no no it wasn't I thought you no. said it was a sister. Yeah, his sister's the main character. Not in this. Yes, it is. That girl is his sister. She's the long lost sister. Oh, of you're family. talking about. I see what you're saying. Oh no yeah. no no then no then, no, no, the no, killer, no you Victor lost Crowley, some sting on that punch. How are you talking about? No, Victor Crowley's still Victor Crowley. That's that's what I'm saying. I thought you when you said earlier it's his sister. I no. thought it was because I've never seen the movie. I thought it was like Friday the Thirteenth, where like the first one you yeah, find out it's his talking. mom. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's talking no. about. Somebody, I'm talking about the fact that somebody in the group that makes the difference. There makes the big. I'm talking about the fact that like like in Friday the Thirteenth, the sister is the one that he's that that's agreeing involved in the movie and difference. all that stuff so. yeah and she didn't know that she was related to Victor Crowley so you know doesn't this Monster Squad movie feel like it would have Corey Feldman and Corey whatever his name Co- if they were a little younger at the Corey's? time if they were younger yeah. at the time yeah, they like, would have been it seem like them, I like think they would have been in it if they were younger at the time yeah but 
Either way, so the movie basically ends with um, Frankenstein monster befriends the little girl, which in all Frankenstein monsters, he, he finds a little girl and either kills her or becomes friends with her. That's how they go <laughs> in every Frankenstein movie that's ever been, been around. So um, the little girl reads off the prophecy and Limbo opens up. The, the, uh, the monsters all get sucked in. As, uh, Frank, as uh, um, Dracula's being sucked in, he tries that last ditch effort to take them with him. Um, the main character stabs him with a stake. Van Helsing, who's been lost in Limbo, pops out and grabs uh, Dracula to try to make sure he goes into Limbo. And uh, they try to take the little girl with him. And uh, uh, Frankenstein steps in and saves the day. So the the bad guy becomes the good guy at the end. And that's how it ends. So. It's just a fun movie. It's an enjoyable monster movie. That made made me smile. You liked it. My kid enjoyed it and got him started with you know with with enjoying monster movies without having to scare the piss out of him the first time. Although I did, it's a good introduction. I did think that uh, Gilman was a little underused. He was, but they had to get Frankenstein out of the swamp somehow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like he was in that scene and then he shows up in the very end. So I don't though know. the mummy, the mummy was great. When the mummy's in the kid's bedroom, he's like, Daddy, Daddy, there's somebody in my room. And he's like, there's nobody in your room. He's like, look, he opens the door. The mummy is standing in the doorway, like about to reach out at him. And the dad's not even looking in the doorway. He's just looking at him. He's like, look, there's nothing in there. Like every other dad, like every other he's like, there's nothing in there. And the kid's like, uh. <laughs> and the mummy's like, and he goes, the dad walks out. He's like, see, you're fine. The kid's still standing there. The mummy walks out and climbs out the window and walks away. And the kid's like, there's a fucking mummy in my closet. So it's pretty good. I wish you would have said a fucking mummy. In my <laughs> it was a good, they, they, they had a lot of good uses of the, of the, of the actual monster lore for the whole storyline. So it, th- it made it enjoyable. I thought it was funny too. You could tell it was an 80s movie when the dad uh, is in his bedroom. And he's changing and he's lighting up a cigarette. <laughs> It's like, that's nothing you see in movies today where the smoking is just, you know. Yeah, now it's just a, a, a snifter scotch yeah, or something. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, Hatchet, though, while, while I liked Monster Squad, Hatchet, though, had an original monster instead of taking from older, older films and trying to put them in a new uh, universe. Thank you for listening. We'll be right back with the results. It's commercial time. You can find me, your host, Brad Scott, at www.indiebradscott.com. We have a list of uh, shows, uh, funny videos, and more. Uh, June 5th and 6th, Rochester, Minnesota, Goonies Comedy Club, June 13th, Downtown Comedy Connection, South Bend, Indiana. Um, Find me on Twitter, at Indie Brad Scott, Facebook, Comedian Brad Scott. Corey, where can we find you at? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Letterboxd at NKOgonzo. And um, that's about it. Vic. Wow. That was short into the sweet spot. I know. I just got to the end of the point. I'm quite impressed with that. It's a change. Huh? Uh, I will be amazingly um, online and doing not much of anything for. I will actually be just getting back on my feet around that time. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get out and about. And you can find me uh, sending things to my Twitter and Instagram at MillerKing51. And on uh, when I'm at home, I will be on Black and Angry on Xbox 360. Find the show on Facebook, The Showdown Podcast, Twitter, at The Showdown Pod. And still not on Instagram. Still not on Instagram. Not really big photos. <laughs> <laughs> not really big into photos at all. All right. The results are in. This was a tough one. This is maybe the toughest decision I've ever had to make. Um, Vic's movie had the more mainstream monsters. Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman. Uh, but Corey's movie sounded like sounded more entertaining. You know, your movie's cult following. Um, your movie has seemed like it might have a cult following, but it's also more recent, so I haven't had time to really develop as much of a cult following. Uh, it's just, it really were great points on both sides. I gotta say, it's, it's a push. It's, uh, it's a split decision. Uh, Vic, I felt, had the better argument. Corey, I felt, had the better movie. I felt like, uh, Hatchet was better than Monster Squad, but I felt like Vic argued, uh, Monster Squad a little better, and it just kind of became like a push. So, Champion keeps the belt. 
Uh, but this neither is, one of you lose. This is a, a first. Yeah, first for the showdown. Split decision. It's that double It's a count out. <laughs> we both knock each other out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's what happened after the end of Rocky. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when everybody went home, they woke them both up and they were it like, hey a, guys, this is what happened. It is a time limit <laughs> draw for Monster Mayhem. Uh, speaking of which, like, if you had, I mean, they've made movies like Freddy vs. Jason and Godzilla vs. King Kong and stuff like that. Alien vs. Predator. Yeah, but they always seem, there's always seems to be more of a marketing standpoint behind, like, who would win, and it always ends up being, like, they only have, like, one little battle, and it's, you know, it's... it's a uh, big letdown. But yeah, so, <laughs> who, wh- who, what are some good monster matchups you think would be there? Who, who do you think would win? Okay, so... I would go the thing from the, the the original thing from the movie. I would put that thing up against um, the blob. The blob way. <laughs> Two monster movies that would like that thing because the blob is like this this thing that just en- engulfs everything. But that monster from from the thing. It's, I don't get it. Like, it can be anything it needs to be. So it could be another love, blob. I would love to see what it would do if it had to fight So it could be another blob. Well, I, I, it wouldn't turn no, into the blob. It that. would mutate itself to, to But what, what beats the, the blob? blob. What this thing blob? might be able to... What beat the blob in the movie? They uh, froze it. Yeah, they froze it. And threw it so and this threw thing it would just be turned into Sub-Zero for Mortal Kombat? Maybe. <laughs> I, like, that's I, the whole thing. Like the things, the thing's ability, that that, I don't, that, that creature's ability is only, that it mo- it modifies itself to whatever it's fighting against. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily a fair monster. I mean, that's kind of like. I think the only thing the thing could do though is just take over a person's body and then. Well, okay, okay. How would the thing? Because remember that the blob it like, takes over. It, it could take over people, somebody's body and then figure out to, how to freeze the blob. How did they kill the thing? Um, I think I remember correctly. Fire? No, fire, fire, fire would fire would expose it, but then they originally they originally froze it too. That's how they originally ah, described that. So one. like they yeah. have the same weakness. <laughs> so like if they fought in like like on the beaches of Jamaica, be, it's yeah, just like, a never ending battle. Yeah, like Peter they, Griffin they, and they, the chickens. Just... <laughs> 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 yeah. Corey, you got a matchup? Shoot, you know, unless the chicken had blade for one. I don't. I don't know. This it's it's hard for me to think of something like that. Um, what do you got? Well, it's a good thing because he's the one that wanted to do it on the fly. <laughs> yeah, no. That would just wing it. Um, what about like uh, I know like they've had Godzilla fight. But what about like Godzilla versus that Cloverfield monster? I'm still confused as to what that Cloverfield monster was. <laughs> well, like, that thing had some like there was it one monster. Or was it multiple monsters? It's well, it's one big monster that had little monsters that, that fell off, off of it. it. Yeah. yeah, so you okay. so, and those those that those little things are just like giant teeth, scratcher yeah. type things. And then, but I mean, Godzilla has fire. What? And Godzilla's bigger. It seems like Godzilla's bigger than the you think Cloverfield the monster. Cloverfield monster. That thing was huge. Well, the Cloverfield monster was more awkwardly shaped. It was almost it's like, like a praying mantis type thing. thing. Yeah, yeah it looked the like the, it looked kind of like the monster from the newer Godzilla movie to me. That flying thing? Oh, the... the it kind of yeah. looked like that. Well, what if me. you made it a triple threat with uh, the monsters from Pacific Rim? The kaiju? Yeah. Those things... That's another That's another cheat, though, I think. That could be considered a cheat, because they can change those into what they need them to be, too. Because I see what you're saying about my about the thing. Because those are modified to be what they need them to be. Because once they figured the out... The monsters? That, once they figured out they were using big, giant robots, they created gaijus that could, that could, that could do um, electro-pneumatic uh, shockwaves. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that they could destroy the robots. So like, well, but in this, they're not going to have time to go over film and so. study. They're, they're in <laughs> yeah. the, so they're they're they just have to pick one. Just there, yeah. They just have to pick one. So pick a specific one. If they use that gorilla gaiju, that thing's pretty tough. The one that spit freaking acid. Ooh. Spit out Speaking of, of gorilla, what about King Kong? Kong? Throw King well, I was going to say, there. what if you did a tag team match? King Kong Godzilla. Good, no, no, no. Cloverfield Monster and Godzilla versus King Kong and Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> Mighty Joe Young's not big enough, is he? Yeah, Mighty Joe Young's not big He was pretty big, wasn't he? He no, wasn't that he was, big. He was, he was big. He was, he was huge, like humongous for a gorilla, but he wasn't like King Kong. Big. Who are the yeah. small monsters? Who are the small monsters in the genre? Like, 
that that aren't huge giant things that you could pin against. I don't think there's other. many small ones because well, this is your film. This humanoid size ones. Yeah, I mean the hum- like Victor Crowley. I mean that's just a regular person. But, but yeah, that is kind what of you do have, you have the aliens were human, were pretty much human size. Yeah. The xenomorphs were human, pretty much human size. Predators were human size. Yeah. Like, those can be considered monsters, even though they're. I don't know. I don't know about the predators. I wouldn't consider predator a monster. Predator. Okay, but what about like alien? I would. What yeah. about like Frankenstein versus Dracula? What about that classic matchup? Who wins that, that fight? I'd say Frankenstein. I'd go with Frankenstein. Mm. Uh, I might have to go. I don't know. It's tough because Frankenstein's strong, but Dracula's got the speed. And Dracula so, can turn into a bat. And he can turn into a. But he has, but he has. As soon as, as soon as Frankenstein gets a hold of him, he's done. Like if he gets his hands on him, he'll tear him apart. Like he's gonna dismember. But, but, but it, you know, it's just like Pacquiao Mayweather. He's got to get his hands on him. I mean, if if but, Dracula can uh, dodge and evade him, turn into a bat, bite him on the neck. Now Frankenstein he's dead. is a Dracula. He can't. He's dead. Yeah. No. 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 Frankenstein, Frankenstein no. Is, dead, is reanimated. He's dead. Literally, the first thing Doctor Frankenstein says is, "It's alive." Yeah, but it's it's just reality. It's alive. It's, it's not, real. Yeah, it's not going. It won't work. It's alive, but dead. <laughs> it won't work. You won't find a vampire eating a zombie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, uh, I, some other small ones, critters and ghoulies. We forgot those. Yeah, critters. Who's critters? Ghoulies? Okay, so ghoulies was um, critters were little, little hairy ball. Things, yeah, yeah. the right? big mouths. Yeah, and ghoulies were these little demons from hell that came up that uh, that this that were in this uh, carnival. And actually, like the, the main thing I remember is that one that comes up to the toilet. Like toilet, that's, yeah. that's the one I always remember is this little ball headed monster yeah. comes up to the toilet. And I don't think it started out. I don't think they started out in a carnival. I think that was like the second or the third movie. Was it? I think so. Um, I can't remember because I just watched the. F- the first one, like last year, and it was uh, who did it have in it? Leonardo DiCaprio was in yep. it, and that that took place in a building. It was like yeah, you're right, you're right. It, it did. was like in an apartment building, yep. and they were down in the basement or like. But there were like three or four different ones. They each had like a different thing that they did. Like one of them was the like that one was like a frog man type creature, and it was pretty crazy. Uh, um, was did, you, did you see Dollmaster, Puppet Master, Puppet Master, Puppet Master? You ever see that? I remember the movies, but I don't. It was I don't the know the the, uh, the the Nazi scientists. Uh, the uh, the Nazis were killing off all the, the the Jewish people during during World War II, and um, there was a guy who was a puppet. Ma- he was a puppet maker, and they were killing off all of his friends. So he was take. He had found a way to put their souls into the puppets that he made to as representations of his friends. And then they, when they came to life, they were protecting him. By killing all the Nazis, and one of them he made in it was like one of the puppets was like it was called Blade, and he had this he had a switchblade for an arm and daggers in his eyes, and they were just really kind of cool, but they were really creepy because they're yeah, marionettes. Yeah. But they would just run around doing stuff, and they were like, I mean, if you're laying there in bed and that thing like comes running towards you, and the way they did the the animation on it was always really kind of creepy. And Beast Man from Masters of the Universe <laughs> versus Benicio Beba. del Toro's <laughs> Wolfman. <laughs> <laughs> I got Beastman. You gotta, you gotta go with Wolfman though. Come no, I on, got Beastman. If you're gonna go there, you have to go Beastman versus Bebop or Rock. Or no, I mean uh, Toka or or, uh, or Razor from the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh, Bebop oh, yeah. Too. The old one, yeah. Yeah, they're gonna be in the new one. Um, I just thought of two. Uh, was uh, Chud? Of, oh yeah, cannibalistic underground humanoid dwellers. Yep, there was that one, and then there, the other one that I thought of too was a basket case. Basket case. Is that the one with the head in the basket? Yeah. Mo- oh, I forgot one. I yeah. saw that. That was creepy. Yeah. It was literally just like a head with a like a body attached underneath the head. Yeah, it was really weird. it had like uh, arms. Yeah, it had like his little like, legs and arms like and T Rex arms. Yeah, it was crazy. That thing was creepy. <laughs> <laughs> And that was a bad, like, it was a really bad production value, but it was the, the thing. Was this? It's a basket, basket case. case. And they made a couple of them, didn't they? Yeah, was there two like of them? At least two. Yeah, it was yeah, They have those one movies about the, the zombie Nazis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Below or something like Dead, that. Dead Snow. Yeah, Dead Snow, yeah. yeah. The, that first movie was good. They made it, yeah, the I really one. liked the first one. The second one wasn't bad, but uh, but, but they're, now we're talking zombies. Did you see, and, did you see Frankenstein's Army? Uh, yes, I did. I actually those liked that one. Those things crazy. I like seeing that. what he came up with as to like using old tech, old tech to make these creature things was crazy. Yeah, I really, I, I like that. It was just the, the the monsters that they that they created. There. Is Godzilla the 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 all time king of the monster movies? I mean, is Godzilla the the number one? 
I think if anyone says what's the what's the most memorable go- monster movie, I would say Godzilla would be. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think in my mind it would be Godzilla, King Kong, and then, which is really weird, Mothra always comes to mind whenever I whenever well, I. Well, because think when of, you think of Godzilla, you I think, think Mothra. Mothra. But it, I don't know why it's always Mothra. But Who's, but do we do we consider Frankenstein and Dracula? That's what I was going to say. Who's well, more yeah. iconic, Dracula well, iconic? or Godzilla? Dracula. It's just because we see so much more of them. Though. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's why to me he's iconic. Well, but do you see much so much more of Dracula? Or do you just see much more of vi- vampire movies? Because there's a lot of well, vampire now movies. It's, that now, now, it's, now it's more than van- now it's more vampire movies. But in the day, but yeah, prior it, to Dra- Twilight, it yeah. was more Dracula. It was Dracula. Dracula is the vampire. Yeah. And so so yeah, I mean, I think Dracula is more iconic. Than now, if you want to say which ones, which one tops out for uh, the classic, the, the 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 main five like Wolfman. Then it would definitely. I think it would be. I think it would be Dracula more than anything. It's oh more, yeah, more known so than anything. No, absolutely. I myself prefer Werewolf over Vampire. But yeah, well, and Dracula was uh, a novel, like books too. So, well, yeah. So, so it, he's got. So, but I'm saying he's got that. He's got that uh, advantage over Godzilla as far as. I mean, there's a lot of Frankenstein books. No, no, I mean over novels. Godzilla. Well, yeah, over Godzilla, yeah. Well, unless you're in Japan, because there's a lot of guns. <laughs> you're driving home. You look over in the distance. You see a Godzilla type monster wreaking havoc on uh, like the city and stuff. Where's the first place you go? Past wherever he wherever he was. Okay. <laughs> so you're gonna try and drive under. I'm gonna him? go. I'm gonna go wherever he. No, I don't have to drive under him. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna get to wherever he's already been. Because if he's going that way, I'm going that way. Bottom line. Yeah, he's probably yeah. not going to turn around. He's already destroyed the town, eating whatever he's going to eat that's over there. If he's heading there to get something, I'm going to be over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to agree with this that. This is why I'm yeah. going to survive the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Speaking of. Yeah, as, that... as he can't walk, this is how he's going to survive. <laughs> he can't drive right now either. So I yeah. will sharpen the end of these. <laughs> <laughs> he can't drive right now either. So he's okay, so, so you're, at, you're at home. Mm-hmm. Okay. Monster, you see said attack on the news. You know monsters heading towards you. You have an hour before he'd reach your location. Now, now I'm not just talking vague direction. What's the first place you go? Where are you going to? There's variables though, like yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there's okay, a lot of. Okay, let's let's put it this way. I'm single, live by myself. Let's make that the let's make that the okay the thing because that's what I'm saying. Like you're single, live by yourself. So you're like. Okay. Where's the first? Are you go? Are you going to get food? Are you going to get other supplies? Where's the first place you're going on your way to get away from the monster? Where's the first place you're going? I would say this: if we're living in a world that that's actually possible, um, I'm gonna have a basement, not a basement, but like a a, a tornado, like you know, the, a bomb shelter, like a bomb shelter type place. That's already gonna be stocked up. I'll go down there, wait for everything to clear out. Okay, this is this is happening to you in this home we're sitting in recording in right now, and it happens you don't tomorrow. Have any, you don't have any of that. Happens tomorrow. Okay, I am going to the. I'm, I'm heading to Plainfield. Okay. Um, there is where the Amazon warehouse is. There's a bunch of supply warehouses over there. That's where I'm going. This is a, this the is, Amazon warehouse. No, not, not necessarily just the Amazon warehouse, but that that warehouse. Well, no, right there, the, Amazon's not bad because yeah. you know they're going to have just a ton of shit. They have things you could use, but not only that. There's a there's the uh, the dollar store warehouse is there. The Amazon warehouse is there. The Walmart warehouse is there. There's guns. There's weapons. Like all that stuff is in that same area. That's that's the direction I'm going. In. This is also a zombie uh, getaway too. Part of it. <laughs> <laughs> but you that's know, where I'm going. I mean, you know where I'm going. The first, the nearest military base. You're going to hop in a tank and you're going to try and blow that sucker away, aren't you? No, I'm guessing they have some type of secret hidden bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in. You're going to try to figure out because all the soldiers are going to be gung ho. Let's defend. You know. You think you really think you can get everybody. in? Huh? You think you can get in where those guys are? At hiding? that point, panic's going to be setting in. I'm going to slip in. Like, yeah. I'm going to be. Be under it's gonna be like a ninja. That or like I don't know. I, 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 that's my that that right there is my fifth day plan. That's part of my fifth day plan. Day five. Yeah, day that's my that's part of my day five plan. Maybe I'd go to like a like a Meyer. Because I'm Target. figuring by day five. I'm figuring by day five either the military is going to be wiped out, or they're going to have either destroyed whatever it is enough for me to, for me to be safe. Sometimes <laughs> when I'm like driving, like 
back and forth to shows and stuff, and I have like a decent amount of time to think and stuff, I I look over and I get like really bored. Where I'm kind of man, I kind of wish something like that would happen. I kind of wish I, I could. Kind of wish over. Godzilla would walk through. Be like an adrenaline rush. You yeah, I could it. drive. You know, get away. Go. Especially when I'm on the road because I'm like, then I know my daughter's safe because she'd be in another state. Right. So I wouldn't have to worry about that. You know what's like here with you. That's around. why I was saying there's like there's there's variables. Like let's eliminate so all this. I don't have to think about my bad credit. I don't have to think about like it's just run, right? <laughs> just run at that point. It's just survive. <laughs> I think we could use that as a country. I think we could use just some type of monster or something. White, yeah, just, a heart reboot caused by something. Wipe it out. It's wipe it out. And it's I'm like, okay if it's a gigantic monster from space, the underground, or whatever. Because most of the people we all don't like, that we all universally don't like, that like post a bunch of like you know terrible, awful things on social media, they aren't surviving. No. <laughs> so like, let's get rid of them. Well, the pizza guy's going to live. People like us are going to live. The rich people, they're going to die because they don't have anybody to serve them. <laughs> Preferably the New England Patriots. How do I start a fire? <laughs> I know how to inflate a ball, but I can't start a fire. <laughs> uh, also, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you, quick update. How is uh, how's the the movie a day thing going? Oh, God. I'm so far behind. Um, you are letting us down. I know. I'm letting <laughs> How many are you behind now? You were behind, I think, 27 the last time we checked in. Was it 27? I think so. I'm currently... I should be at 131. I'm only at 99. So you're 32. I'm 32, Dan. So you've fallen back five more movies. Yeah. Well, I told you Colorado. Since proclaiming. No, no, no. In fact, you said Colorado's where I'm going to catch it up. I'm going to no, make it up. Yeah, you Go did. back and listen to the tape. I said, no, I'm not. I'm going to fall back even further. Cause... First of all, this is 2015. There's no tape. There's no tape. <laughs> this is all we digital. can find an app for it that'll play it like it's a tape, but there's yeah. no tape. Well, I am pretty sure nope. you said. I said Colorado's going to screw me because I'm a, I'm only going to end up seeing one while I'm out there. Maybe two. I only saw one while I was out there. Oh my god! Our last episode was two hours and forty five minutes. Yeah, I know. That's that's like the longest. <laughs> Holy one. hell! You guys were just going. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get him to shut up. That's. I mean, that's hey, back in the day. Yeah, no, you know what it is? Been... It's 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 uh, the fuel. No, not for me. No, I'm talking about him. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we uh, we need to get Corey. Like, you need to you need to get on the ball. I still think you're going to fail miserably. Oh, I, I bet wrong. you. Okay, over under, Vic. Uh, I say he finishes the year. He's supposed to watch 365 movies, mm-hmm. right? I bet two. How many are you right now? Ninety nine. Two fifty. Well, you got me. You you got lower than I was gonna go. Okay, so you're saying over. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go with the over with uh, two eighty three. All right, hold it's on. gonna be an uh, it's we're gonna, gonna be write, an off we're number. gonna write that it's down. Two eighty three. All right, Brad says two fifty or wait, you said two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. All right, it fixes what? Two eighty three. Two eighty three. All right, we'll see. Well, you know the fucked up thing is if he's at two forty nine. He's not going to watch another day. <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to do it. If he knows he can't like, get to it, he's going to be like, fuck it, 249. You were wrong. <laughs> I you wrong. Two, you didn't get the over it. You didn't get or, the under. Or he'll watch some bullshit, like, two part movie. And you're like, no, 251. <laughs> Underestimate. You're both me. wrong. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see where we end up at. He's going to go one over. <laughs> I'm going go, to go, go 284. <laughs> he's touching the phone. Alright. Well, uh, next uh, episode, we've yet to determine the uh, category. It'll be a surprise. We are very professional. That's very assuming that we survive the oncoming attack of the monster going to come yeah. after us in the next two weeks. Uh, but uh, for Vic Miller, Corey Miller, I'm Brad Scott. Good night and good luck.